Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 363 with an expedition match stream for several replays from basically this last week. Mostly Monkey actually remembering to upload replays, as he has a tendency to forget that. Yes, game replays is there for a reason, even though it's barely there for Akron. But it is there for a reason, that's where stuff gets uploaded to. If you want it, if it doesn't happen on game replays, it didn't happen. Anyway, on to the game, so we have Cybernetic Pony and Monkey going at it on Imperium. And Let's get started right away. So, Cybernetic Pony starting on the northeast side of the map. Sorry, Monkey in the northeast side of the map as Vecure. Cybernetic Pony at the southeast side of the map is going for CISO. So, very typical for these each of these players. Although, Cybernetic Pony has a tendency to go pretty evenly CISO and Grekum. But Monkey is a devoted, die-hard Vecure zealot and will never change. They probably will now that I've said that. Right now, just both players getting in their early starts going. Probably going to see Monkuki go for his normal foundation opening. Just foundation rush with infantry. We do see his infantry already are ordered to Cybernetic Pony's base. While Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is sending out just a couple scouting units forward while setting up what looks like an early armory, probably for early tech. He might go for an early infantry attack, but I kind of doubt it. Cybernetic Pony tends to go for a bit more of an early factory-based build. Tends not to go for the sort of infantry rushes that say Catalyte will go for. But first off, Monkey is going to get better economy. Getting more RPs, and then from there, move on to factory, most likely. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has to contend. Sorry. Monkey, on the other hand, sending in his. Well, his imagery coming in. Cybernetic Pony's going to deal with that, and probably will be able to. He's probably expecting this. It's probably why this armory is here. Get a couple more Marines, just in case. Just for the Shin Veer, Teth Veer, almost the Zion Veer that's coming in. Foundation supported Zion Veers are kind of scary. And, oh, someone in the chat, Aaron is asking if Akron's free. No, Akron's 10 bucks for two copies. Or something like that. Like, you get. Yeah, basically it's $10 and you get two license keys. So you get for you and a friend. Anyway, Monkey is in fact going for the Foundation as expected. No surprises there. He is, however, about half a minute ahead of Cybernetic Pony, meaning that he doesn't know about the armory, and Cybernetic Pony is indeed using that to set up special ops, which will probably shut down this infantry rush cold. We'll find out, though, in just a second, as Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, has the infantry rush coming in and getting rid of the Zion Veer first, which means the Foundation is able to get up. Actually, special op does go down. Marine with special op support is able to come through, but even with that... The Foundation is giving the Shin Veer a lot more health than it normally would, just from the healing effect. And it looks like Cybernetic Pony might be keeping his infantry scouts back. Monkey back at his base. He has no additional Zion Veer. So once again, as usual, his base is completely undefended and unattended. No Zion Veer there to build up, but he's probably just going to go for an all-in. In fact, he might... Is he going to pull it off? This is both players synchronized at the present, and... It looks like Cybernetic Pony is actually getting quite a lot of room in it. Wow, sorry. Cybernetic Pony is getting a lot of damage taken. Monkey's getting a lot of room in there. The second no, Okay. Next iteration, Zion Veer did not quite survive, but it looks like Monkey might... He's jumping back to the beginning of the timeline. He might actually be canceling this. It was working out fairly well, but... I don't know why he would go to the beginning of the timeline other than to adjust this completely. While Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand... Jumping forward, I guess, to double-check what's happened to his base, but even back when he was looking, he is taking a lot of damage. Armory's getting heavily damaged, getting it special as quickly as he can, and at the same time destroying as much as he can of Monkuki's main base. Just, just to prevent anything from happening after this point, Monkuki back at the 212 mark. His base is actually safe this time around. This iteration, Cyber Andy Pony is keeping all of his infantry in his base to stop Monkuki's attack, and Monkuki's attack has been successfully repelled on this iteration. However, Monkey jumping back to the one minute mark, right by the unplayable past edge, and he is retreating. Deciding to send his units back to base and build up as normal into the late game. Realizing he cannot get through Cybernetic Pony's defenses using his very well known infantry foundation rush, he goes back to probably deep, quick depot, and then from there. Actually, wow! One and a half minute depot. Yeah, that is a really fast depot. Monkey just loves his rush strategies. If it's not a Foundation Rush, it's a Depot Rush. He's got an RP on Q-Plasma. He's definitely getting the Q-Plasma for this. Likely to be Zion Pulsers, though. Honestly, probably Zion Tercher, given his normal habits. 
typically goes for Zion Turcher first off, but we'll see. Only needs about 10 seconds more wait time just to get that Zion Turcher off from the Zion Veer. And he will possibly do that. Like, oh no, never mind. He needs to wait a bit longer. But no, it doesn't matter. He is going for Zion Pulsers as expected. So yes, two Zion Pulsers being built. And the other Zion Veer is now being used for further... Is it being used for the economic development? It was at first. At any rate, Mongoogie going for two or three Zion Pulsers. While Cybernetic Pony, realizing he has a bit of breathing room, having, having built some inventory for extra defense, now going for a factory with a second importer. Altogether, that should be a pretty good defense. As soon as he gets some ATHCs, he'll probably be fine. Even with the Zion Pulsers coming in, this much infantry, this much infantry alone should be able to deal with the Zion Pulsers if they skip teleport in. If they don't skip teleport in, then it's going to be a bit harder for them. But if they do, then yeah, it'll work out for Cybernetic Pony. Though it looks like Monkuki is probably going to drive them. I don't think he's going to skip them. He only has the one Q Plasma RP, and he's probably going to want to get more Zion Pulsers using it. We'll see, though. He's only 2 QP away from giving both of these Zion Pulsers skip teleport. So, 325 mark, jumping up to the 437 mark where Cybernetic Pony is getting a Lancer, which is going to be a very nice answer to the Zion, or would be a nice answer to the Zion Pulser, if more for the fact that the Zion Pulsers are in the base with the Teth Veer, and even then the Zion Veers can beat Lancers one-on-one, -on -one, but the Teth Veer would just slaughter an army of them. So, Cybernetic Pony will know what's going on, but he won't be able to easily counter it directly yet. And a third Zion Pulsar is coming in. Monkuki is not getting skip teleport on them. However, Cybernetic Pony is getting machinery, likely to go for Tornads in order to counter the Zion Pulsar since he's likely to be expecting them. And even then, if he wasn't expecting them, he'd be expecting Zion Turchers, which Tornads would also counter. Although, ATHCs would do as good of a job too for detection, but Tornads are stronger and tougher. I can see that being an option. And Cybernetic Pony getting another factor. He is definitely going for... Oh, going for tanks, actually. Not going for Tornads. Interesting. No detection on hand. His infantry are actually further back. Going to Monkuki's point of view, the 410 mark. When Monkuki starts the attack, he has three... Okay, actually, Shinveer and three Zion Pulsers. are going to have Foundation support on the Zion Pulsers, while Teth Pulsar, built in the main base. Still no real strength in economy, though. Cybernetic Pony is really playing to the late game. He's trying to stay alive as long as he can. Well, rather, trying to stay alive long enough to stabilize with a very strong army. And then Monkuki is just going to fall apart. If this attack here does not work, Monkuki basically has nothing to work with. That will be problematic, but with this... Well, the foundation, especially if he builds a depot on the foundation, Monkuki is probably going to use that for depot micro, and that's going to be extremely problematic. And seeing as Monkuki did walk his Iron Pulsers in, he was able to just get through without having to worry about the imagery surrounding him. Cybernetic Pony, about 30 seconds down from here, doesn't have any real change in tactics in the moment. Looks like he's allowing Monkuki to get further and further into his base before sending the units out at him. Letting the factories take the brunt of it rather than his infantry. Not sure how well that's going to work though. Probably not very. But like I said, Monkuki doesn't have a whole lot in base. He has some economy. He's going to be able to build up a bit here and there. But he's not building any additional vehicles in the moment. Does have a Teth Pulsar ruining the base. He, the Teth Pulsar does have actually a skip teleport. For that matter, only that one has skip teleport. The rest of them do not have skip teleport. Yeah, Cybernetic Pony still holding. He's holding on, but it's tough. He is running out of units. He's running out of production structures, losing a factory that had an ATHC half built, too. With the tank also nearly done. Same time, we see Cybernetic Pony's point of view. He has the tank finished, which will help a lot against the Teth Pulsar, but at this point, the Lancers are dead, and no further Lancers were being built. See, this foundation here not turning into a depot, so. Monkuki either forgetting about it or just really wanted that to have as additional healing. However, that Teth Pulsar is able to go down and Monkuki cannot do anything about it. Oh, never mind, he can't. He already did. Never mind. Monkuki already did something about it. And at the same time, we have the tanks are dealing with one of the Zion Pulsars, but even then, Cybernetic Pony is losing a lot of his base, already losing a factory and an importer. Able to take out a couple of Zion Pulsars in the process, but there's that depot and Monkuki is going to have. His legendary depot micro working for him right now. Main base, still nothing happening, so Monkuki's not changing up that at all. Cybernetic Pony getting... There we go, there are the Tornads, I was looking for those. And another factory being built up with another armory, so... Sorry, another importer. Another two importers. Cybernetic Pony is rebuilding what he can, although... These RPs are kind of defend, undefended, but... Frankly, 
That is the least of Cyber Ninja Pony's concerns. However, Mon Cookie is in a tight spot right now. Cyber Ninja Pony has just managed to get through all of Mon Cookie's forces. Jumping back half a minute to see what's actually happening. And at Mon Cookie's point of view, this is nearly confirmed. There is one Zion Pulsar left. But with that Tornado coming in, that Zion Pulsar has very little time left to live. In fact, I don't think it's going to be able to live at all. Teth Veer turning to a Teth Pulsar again, however. That is going to be problematic for the Tornado. But even with that, the Teth Pulsar is not going to last a long time. And neither with the Teth Veer under it. Or in it, rather. The Teth Veer goes down and the Zion... Zion Pulsar is about to go down as well. Monkey is going to jump it back into the deep, almost likely. Or be as best as he can. But even then, no, it's not working out for him. Next iteration looked like the Zion Pulsar ultimately didn't live. Now this tank has a clear shot in, but instead it's going straight from Monkey's base directly. Cyber Nanny Pony just wants to cut it off at the source. And it looks like, jumping back to his own iteration, Cyber Nanny Pony is managing to save his Tornad, moving it back. No MFBs in play, though, so he can't actually repair it. Getting another Tornad, however... And this Tornado just going out to scout to get rid of this depot. But Monkuki will likely deal with it. And the second Tornado taking a lot of damage from the Teth Balser. Unfortunately for it, didn't attack the Teth Balser directly. Went for the Shin Veer instead. Which was a mistake, frankly. Now Monkuki is going to have to deal with his main base getting assaulted. And he does not have any vehicle. No, he has a Teth... Sorry. Zion Turcher at his main base. That is being constructed. The Tornado is very weak and that's not going to work out very well. That Tornado will not help out. It's going to die for the first shot. And Cybernetic Pony does not... Well, he has more Tornads and tanks coming in. But not much inside Monkuki's base. And Monkuki's going to defend himself. He's going to have Zion Veers probably built up in his main base. And he is not out yet. Managed to recover, not make this an all-in. And that Zion Tercher... Is it going to get cloaked? No, it's not actually that tank. Just walking in. Cybernetic Pony, I think he was trying to Echo Scout with that tank. But that might have been a bit too risky. What is he actually doing? Let's see. No, that tank is not having his orders changed. Cyber Pony can't even change the orders, or just now can change the orders, but it's too late. That tank is gone. And Cyber Pony, however, he's had a major economic advantage this entire game. He has, looks like, five and two, no, four and four to Mon Cookie's one and two. That is, resource processors on Liquid Crystal and Q Plasma, respectively. And it looks like. That means Cybernetic Pony's going to be able to just rebuild a larger army, get all the units he needs, actually. At this point, he has a lot of money in the bank. Monkuki spent most of his money in the bank on this Zion Turcher, which a health... Well, actually, two Zion Turchers. And a healthy Tornado and Tank will be able to take care of the Zion Turchers without issues. Tornado's just detect him out, and the tanks for additional firepower, for extra damage. However, Teth Pulsers and Teth Veer are still being a thorn in those Tornado's sides. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cybernetic Pony built a couple ATHCs for additional detection help. I mean, they aren't very strong, yes, but at least they're not going to die to Teth Pulsars too easily. That being said, this iteration worked out well for Cybernetic Pony, but now, there it goes, there's the cloaking on the Zion Turcher. However, it looks like Monkuki doesn't actually get the benefits of that. Cybernetic Pony targeting the depot instead. So, sure, it's cloaked, that's great and all, but that Zion Turcher is going to have no repair options. Monkuki might jump into the depot. We are at Monkuki's point of view. If he jumps into the depot, however, that is suicide. We'll be able to get rid of one of the tanks, but losing the depot in the process takes off a lot of pressure from Cybernetic Pony, and that was in the unplayable past. Monkuki does not have gate tech, so that's not going to help out. Cybernetic Pony just needs to move this Tornado closer in, and he does, in fact, do so. Jumping back to Monkuki's point of view to see what happened. Bit of a replay, and there it is. Tornado running in there and killing that Zion Turcher. Finishing it off, and Cybernetic Pony finally gets control over the area in front of his base. Finally gets his front yard back to him. Gets Monkuki off his... Well, it would be lawn if it weren't for all the snow and ice. Gets Monkuki off his ice. Nah, it doesn't have the same ring to it. You imagine, you know, back... Humanity's early days. And, you know, old Inuit elders just yelling at the youngins around there. Hey, get off my ice! Well, not actually that, because of course Inuits do not speak English, but... Since I don't speak Inuk Tuk, uh, it's a bit of a compromise, I'm afraid. It's the best I can do. Or what Inuk Tuk, that's what the language is called. Anyway, my point is, there is no point. That was just a terrible non sequitur. However, back to the game. As my brain has now managed to re rest control of my mouth once again, Mon Cookie is managing to get a bit of damage in Cybernetic Pony. That is one importer, but that's not a whole lot. Against With four importers being built, I mean, this isn't a bad route to go, but at the same time, it's still 
going to be a bit problematic. I mean, Monk, he did manage to get rid of one importer, but frankly, he's still he's running 2-2 two and two right now compared to 780 Ponies 4-4. Four and four. And... Actually, 780 Ponies 4-4 four, four and 4, because he has four importers on top of that. Summary Pony getting wise this as well, setting up a couple defense turrets. His main base is pretty much impenetrable to harassment. There's not a whole lot that Monkuki can do other than maybe some sh some hidden expansions. That's about it. Honestly, hidden expansions are that or surrender. Surrendering works too. Well, no, it doesn't, but it does end the game. So that was that game, and my insensitive racist comments. Sorry about that to any Inuit viewers. I probably have been insensitive as a result of my little joke. But anyway. I really don't know how many viewers I have in none of it in Northwest Territories. Probably not many. Probably zero. But that aside, next game will be up in just a moment. Be a, another Monkey Cybernetic Pony game, but this time it's going to be on Tomb of Heroes because that's where all the games are being played on nowadays. That's the cool place. Has been for a long time. Be back with that in just a moment. Stay tuned.